Hello friends and welcome to another point and click game from Sierra. What a majestic opening. So iconic. Yes, it's King's Quest V! Absence makes the heart go yonder. Have you previously played King's Quest V? Who's this? Another friend? Yes, this game has voices. Uh, played it many times, but let's just say Warning. no. This cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete mm -hmm. this game. Mm -hmm. Please be sure to check your inventory if you decide to skip. Well, I would like to watch all the hard work the people at Sierra did for us to enjoy the fifth installment of King's Quest. There it is, Daventry, in all its splendor and glory, alligators in the moat, No, an evil wizard. He's brewing a storm. What? I say, my castle. Nary a word. Just took our castle and left. Well. I think King Graham will have something to say about that. Ready for the big reveal? As he slowly walks from behind the tree, there he is. That fruit we got him in King's Quest IV, let me tell you, did wonders for him. He is looking as fit as a fiddle, picking roses, leisurely strolling. Enjoying all his kingdom has to offer. It's very peaceful. It's a Bob Ross landscape right there. I enjoy it. Hear the wind, the water. It's all so comforting. Oh no. My castle, what has happened? I saw it all, King Graham, it was a wizard. What? There he is, wearing his vest. Ooh, I know what happened to your castle. I saw it all. Yes, I did. You did? Well then, what happened? Seriously, look how swole King Graham is. Powerful and evil wizard Mordak, who did it? Ooh, I just happened to be visiting with an old friend when I saw him materialize out of thin air. Thank goodness he didn't notice me. Well, don't stop now. Go on. Oh, he's so adorable. He conjured up a terrible whirlwind that swirled faster and faster around the castle. With another incantation, Mordak then caused the wind to draw the castle up into the sky and out of sight. Ooh, it was something to see, all right. Why? Why would this wizard, Mordak, want my castle? What could he have against me and my family? That I don't know. Ooh, I only know that it was Mordak who took your castle and your family. Well, perhaps I can help you. My employer also happens to be a wizard, which is why I recognized Mordak. Ooh, unlike Mordak, though, my employer is a very good wizard. <laughs> a very His good name is wizard. Crispin Arthur, but we all call him Crispin for short. The only problem is, you see. <laughs> oh, he's so clumsy and so lovable. <laughs> anyway, oh, where was I? Don't worry, Cedric, we didn't see anything. The only problem is that Crispin is getting on in years and tends to be a bit forgetful. I don't know. This doesn't sound as if it would work. Oh, sure it would. Crispin is a very qualified wizard, one of the best. He just gets a little forgetful now and again, that's all. Now, where is it? Ooh, I know I brought it with me. Aha! Here it is! What is that? 
Well, it is my opinion that you don't stand a chance against the likes of Mordak. Ooh, excuse me for saying, Your Majesty, but you don't have a choice. You must come with me. I'm sure Crispin can help you. There we go, some good old Peter Pan fairy dust. What is that stuff? Ooh, just some old leftover fairy dust I've been carrying around. Ooh, it'll help you to fly. You can follow me to the land of Serenia, where Crispin and I live. It's much too far to walk, you know. Ooh, I think the fairy dust is still good. <laughs> I hope so, Cedric. <laughs> Off to the land of Serenia. Say goodbye to Daventry once again. Come on! Up here! We're with you, Cedric. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, Daventry. We're back. As King Graham, the one who started it all. <laughs> we are starting this adventure off right. A talking, friendly, clumsy owl, an evil wizard. And we are just flying through the air. Not to mention that the sound, the graphics, and the inclusion of voices are just well beyond where we were with the other King's Quest games. Even the last one, King's Quest IV. This, this was such a Big jump. I was so excited when I played this game. There it is! Down here! Come on! Okay, here I come! <laughs> oh no! My king! Just wore off. Seems that way, Cedric. <laughs> Cedric? Where have you been? I've been calling for you. Well, well. What have we here? You know, just, just a king bathing in your very tiny river. A bit clumsy, are you? Well, come on in the house and drive. Not off. clumsy, I'm a king! Sitting around like a wet dog. I'm not a wet dog, I'm a king! Just just a wet king. Cedric, go into the house and pour each of us a nice hot cup of tea. Ooh, Ooh. Right, Is talking Al serves tea? Crispin's living the good life. Yes, let's drink tea and talk about our problems. The Society of Wizards has always taken a dim view of Mordak and his abuse of his power. Why he's even been put on suspension a few times. It never seems to do any good, though. Crispin, why would Mordak want to take my family or castle? What did we ever do to him? I'm afraid I don't know the answer to that. Mordak is a very unpredictable wizard. I've never understood that evil mind of his. Ooh, I thought perhaps you could help his majesty, Crispin. That's why I brought him here. Well, let me see now. I used to be a very powerful wizard at one time, you know. But I've gotten a little rusty lately. <laughs> a little rusty? That's quite enough from you, Cedric. <laughs> Let's keep it friendly now. I don't know what I have that would be of much use to you. Most of my wizard stuff is pretty old and worn out. But let's see what I can find. Oh boy, look at him go. <laughs> There's the true hero of the story. Crispin. One inch at a time. No, that won't do. That's all 
used up. Hmm. It might work. Here, eat this. What is that? That's an old piece of magical white snake I had left over from last year. With it, you'll be able to communicate with the natural and animal world. You could find hmm. white helpful. Very similar to King's Quest 4. We've made friends with a lot of animals. Here's my old wand. I don't even know if it works anymore. Most of its power may be gone. You should know that wands are like pets. They've got to get to know you before they'll work for you. Just treat it with care and respect, and hopefully it will do something for you. You'd better get going, my boy. No telling what that confounded Morlack could be up to. You go with him, Cedric. Show him the way. Oh, me. Yes, you don't be <laughs> such a coward. Now go on. You'd better get started. Thank you, sir. I appreciate all you've done for me. Digging that bass in the music. It's ramping it up. I'm getting pumped. We're about to play King's Quest V. It's happening. Heck yeah. Such a good game. Ooh, I suggest we visit the town first. How about it, Your Majesty? Town sounds good. Please don't call me Your Majesty, Cedric. It's much too formal. I'd like it if you'd just call me Greg. Yeah, let's keep it cash. I'd be delighted to, Graham. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, the town. You might be able to find some supplies there. It's just over a little hill to the south, not too far. Well then, let's be on our way, Cedric. I think Cedric and Crispin are both getting a little forgetful. But that just makes them more charming. So, this is the first game with uh, voices that I'll be playing, and I'm curious of how I should be, you know, doing my own little voice narration over it and letting everyone still hear the game. So I'll do my best, but if anyone has any notes after watching this video, uh, let me know in the comments. Nestled among the trees of the forest sits the wizard Crispin's worn but cozy cottage. I always like to look around a bit. Impatiently, Cedric waits for Graham. A tiny pond adds charm to Crispin's forested home. How about we look at ourselves? King Graham, heavy of heart, searches far and wide for his beloved family, who've been stolen by the evil wizard Mordak. Oh, I see it all. I see it all in his face. And why not give ourselves some words of encouragement? Talking to yourself again, Graham? You know, it's, it's not the craziest thing. Cedric seems to be quietly contemplating their current situation, and so is not inclined to indulge in conversation right now. Mm. Well, I'd like to make sure I didn't forget anything. Let's check back in on Crispin. Oh, yes, I'm going to have to turn the speed up a little. Crispin, what's going on? You got any more tea, my man? Don't be wasting your time coming in uh -huh. here. Young man, I've done all I can for you. Now it's up to you. Well... Anyway, I'm not going to be here for a little while. There's an emergency I have to attend to in a neighboring land. I'll try to keep an eye out for you, but this is something you and Cedric are going to have to do yourselves. I wish you the best, King Graham. I appreciate all you've done, Crispin. I'll be on my way now. Hmm. Something's happening... A catastrophe in another land, huh? Worse than my family and castle disappearing, I am, I'm guessing. <laughs> Turn it all the way up. Just one down. There we are. And save the game. Swole Graham. There we go. I just can never get over how much more fit he is over the previous game where he was on death's bed. <clears throat> Graham, watch out! A poison snake! Ah, yes. Probably the most often quoted line in the series. A poison snake! Even though I'm quite a fan of singing Girl in the Tower. Let's look at that snake. A large, venomous snake blocks Graham's passage to the east. 
All right. Well, check out our inventory. We have the wand. The old wand doesn't seem to have any vitality left in it. All right. Well, I don't think the wand's going to help us now. So we keep exploring. Let's check out the town Cedric mentioned before. The quaint little town of Serenia nestles at the base of a great snow-capped mountain range which rises sharply to the east. All right. I like its look. It's homely. I see a fire burning. I like the water wheel. Little, little animal here. Secure within a small pen, a spotted cow quietly chews her cow. Oh. Whoop. Accidentally skipped that. Well, that's just... Cedric, uh... He doesn't want to come into the town with us. That's fine. While blocking an alleyway, a frustrated man fixes a broken wheel on his wagon. Graham notices an old wooden barrel on the street corner. Now let's check out this barrel. Inside the barrel, Graham sees an old rotting fish. Every adventure needs an old rotting fish. Graham leans way down into the barrel and removes, phew, the smelly old fish. Let's see if we can help this gentleman right here. How goes it with you, good fellow? Not well, I'm afraid. This old wagon's always giving me trouble. Can I help you in any way? Thank you kindly, but I think I can handle it. All right, then. Good luck. Thanks. With this wagon, I'm going <laughs> to need it. He's the protagonist of his own journey, and I know he can accomplish great things. Whoa, buddy. May I help you, sir? Uh, I gotta see what's going on here. At the back of the shop, Graham notices a dressing room in which a rude, finicky customer tries on many items of fine clothing. I'm interested in buying something here. Ah, let me show you some things. A fine piece of cloth. With this material, I could make you beautiful shirts. There isn't a more beautiful piece of fabric to be found anywhere. With this, I could make you the finest trousers you've ever had. Well, what do you think? Well, right now I'm just looking. Thanks anyway. Sure, sure. Whatever you say, I'm just here to help. Leave it to a king just to keep window shopping. Graham, I think you're beautiful enough. Well, actually, check out the cloak. In the corner of the shop, draped casually over a tailor's form, Graham sees a thick fur-lined cloak. I don't like this at all. Let's go talk to that guy. The rude customer doesn't care to talk to Graham. Why, well, then I suppose we'll mosey on. And what is this sparkle? Graham notices a shiny silver coin lying forgotten on the street near the broken wagon. Bending down, Graham quickly retrieves the silver coin from the street. All right. One silver coin in the bank while I peruse these shops. Come on in, look around. Let me know if you're interested in anything. Sure, I'll take a look around. The shipment of carving wood hasn't come in yet. What should we do? If it's not in by tomorrow, I'll send you to the sawmill. Okay, Papa? Grandpapa? Yeah, my darling? Can I keep this doll? I really like her. Now, Katrina, you know these toys are for sale for other kinder. Besides, you've got plenty of dolls. You can play mid her, but just be careful. All right, Grandpapa. I'll take care of it. Oh, nice. Just a family-owned shop. Graham notices a strong little sled hanging on a side wall. The sled? Okay. The plump old toy maker, who seems a jolly sort, carefully mends a toy while sitting comfortably behind the counter. A pretty little girl, who must be the toy maker's granddaughter, plays with a doll while grandfather looks on. Well, what kind of toys do you have here, good sir? This is a fine little toy shop you have here. You must be very proud. Danke, son. I've worked very hard at it over the yards. But you know, you need to really love it. Won't I do? <laughs> Are most of these toys your creations? Yeah, most of them. But not all. 
some my son made, some I bought, some I traded for. You're very talented. Danka, danka. Well, let me know if I can help you. I certainly do love how Graham himself is the most wholesome man. Someone to appreciate, especially on this channel. Pays no attention to Graham. Right. The girl is busy playing, can't blame her. Let's see, I think we have one more shop over here. Oh, a dog! I must pet it. Take a look around if you want, but we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. We sold our last finished pair yesterday. Our business ain't doing so good anymore, and we're getting too old to keep trying. Is there anything I can do to help? There ain't nothing you can do, short of buying us out. But like I said, if you want to look around, feel free. I do have one okay. silver coin. I'll purchase this entire store. A skinny old dog lies down on the hard floor of the shoe shop. All right, let's give that good boy a pet. This old dog doesn't appeal to Graham. Okay. Graham, I I talked you up, I praised you, and now you're litting me down. You gotta pet that dog. The old shoemaker, eyes squinted and fingers calloused from years of making shoes, drives tiny nails into a shoe sole with a small cobbler's hammer. The shoemaker's wife, looking haggard and worn, tiredly stitches away at a large piece of shoe leather. The old shoemaker wearily hammers tiny nails in a shoe sole. He doesn't even seem to notice Graham. The old dog pays no attention to Graham. All right. Well, I think we've got to see the sights here, checked out the shops, know what's going on. So we can buy some clothing, we can buy some toys, and apparently we can't buy any shoes. But we certainly could find a way to help them out, the cobbler and his wife. Cedric, I'm back from shopping, or at least, you know, window shopping. Ooh, if you follow this road along the river, you'll come to the town bakehouse. You might find something delicious. <laughs> I mean, useful there. Hmm, Cedric's helping us out, giving us some hints. He's like Navi, way before Navi existed. If Cedric says, hey, listen, I'm gonna, gonna lose my mind. With a fine view of the rushing river, the bakehouse sits a bit out of town, along an old rutted road. Well, I know I certainly have a sweet tooth. Not sure about... Graham, he looks like he has 1% body fat now. But you know what? Maybe some tastiness will help him forget about his problems. And how is your poor dear mother doing, William? Oh, she hasn't been doing too well lately. But my brother and I help out whenever we can. Thanks for asking, Amanda. Austin, keep your fingers out of that pie. The pies look lovely. I think I'll take one. Yes, they were just made fresh this morning. Here you go. Yes, this will be a fine dessert for our dinner tonight. Let's go home, Austin. Here's the last of the pies. Welcome to our bakehouse, traveler. Of course, all of our wares are wonderful. But today, we've got a special on custard pie. Just one silver coin each, but take your time. Let me know when you're ready. One silver coin, you say? First, let me check out your cat. The Baker brothers seem to have a pet. A large, mangy cat. The cat doesn't look very friendly. Oh, <laughs> That's a shame, but I'll respect the cat, not push myself on it. Let's go ahead and save the game. We have no pets yet. No, no petting, no petting allowed. No pets for anybody. I'll have to give Cedric a pet. Uh, let's see. Let's talk to the beggar. Everything looks so delicious. Oh, it's hard to yes, it does, King Graham. <laughs> Everybody has that problem, but 
What a problem to have. <laughs> Those custard pies look most delicious. Yes, they're made from a recipe handed down from our dear mama and her mama before her. Hmm, it's still hard to decide though. Well, take your time, there's no hurry. Only a shame I have only one silver coin. But at least I can afford one pie. I will enjoy it in its entirety. Would you like a pie, sir? Well, yes, actually I would. That'll be one silver coin then. Let me see if I have one. Well, let me know if you do. No problem at all, my good man. Let's give it a look real quick. It is but a common silver coin. Phew. The smelly old fish is disgusting. <laughs> can even smell it just by looking at it. Let's see. I'll do this. Here you are. Sir, I would like to purchase one of your custard pies. These pies cost one silver coin each. I've got it right here. Here you go. I hope you enjoy your custard pie. Oh, I'm sure I will. In fact, let me look upon its custardiness. Mmm. Custard pie looks delicious. Yes, it does. All right, everything going well at the bakery. Let's see if we can pet Cedric. I guess not. See the road there? Back to the east is the town. Hmm. I don't think we have to go back to the town just yet, Cedric. Let us keep exploring and see we have ahead of us the swarthy hog interesting back down the road to the east you will run into the bakehouse all right well the swarthy hog i have to say i'm not sure it will be so friendly hint hint something i remember from my earlier a let's plays dominates the area in front of the barn. King oh. Graham, heavy I'm meant to keep walking. Let, let's find the path. There we are. Oh, no. Ooh, watch out for the bear, Graham. But Pooh is in his bear. A large bear seems to be very interested in the honey inside the old tree. A swarm of bees buzz around a hole in a rotted old tree. I must save those bees. But first I must save our game. It be a bear. Well, the wizard Crispin did say we could talk to animals. Let's try to make friends. The bear is too intent on the honey to listen to Graham. Words will not work here, but friendships can be made other ways. Let's try a stinky fish. Yes. I'm Quincy. Oh my gosh. Kind sir. I wish to thank you ever so much for saving our hive from the claws of that horrible bear. In return. I offer you a luscious honeycomb from our hive. Please feel free to retrieve She got like a southern accent. I promise my bees won't harm you. It may come in handy on your travel. My bees won't harm you. Oh, what is this? Graham notices a large stick lying on the ground near the old tree. Large stick, you say? I could use that with the, uh... Cobbler's Graham dog. Bends down and picks up the large stick from the ground. Mm hmm. Let us reach in here. Graham reaches a hand into the beehive and retrieves a very sticky chunk of honeycomb. Wrapping it in a protective piece of cloth, he then pockets it. Well, we didn't make friends, or we didn't get to talk to the bear, but we did get to talk to the queen bee. That's nice. Let's see what we have here. We have a stick. It appears to be an average stick of water. And honeycomb. Honey drips at the edges of the honeycomb. A honey dripping honeycomb. Okay. A bully of a dog terrorizes the poor ants as he playfully digs at their large anthill. 
All right, maybe we can talk to this animal. Talk to the dog. The dog is more interested in the anthill than in the Okay, well, I was going to save the steak for the cobbler dog, but let's try it here. Fetch. Are you supposed to bring it back? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm King Anthony the Great. May I ask who you are? Why, certainly. I'm King Graham of Daventry, and this is my friend, Cedric. We're seeking a way to cross the Great Mountains to the ocean on the other side. That is a very perilous undertaking. I wish you would reconsider. But if you shall not, in return for rescuing our home from that plea that incur, I wish to offer you our help, if perchance you may ever need it. Thank you very much, King Antony. Cedric and I appreciate your kind offer. We look forward to meeting you again. Oh, we met royalty twice in the span of two screens queen bee king ant things are going so well Let's see what we have over here an old grandfather gnome sits contentedly on an old stump and smokes a large pipe while watching his grandson at play Sitting on a stool in front of his house, a young gnome happily plays with an exquisite marionette. Hmm. Something the toy maker or his daughter could be interested in. Let's chat him up and see what the deal is. Excuse me, sir. Oh, I'm terribly sorry to bother you. I was just noticing your son's marionette. It's very interesting. Where did you get it? It's grandson, not son, and I made it for him. Why do you care? I just wanted to comment on its artistry. It's very well done. I don't oh, you are too pure, it. King Graham. If it could, the price would be very steep. I reckon you couldn't afford it. Now, leave me and my grandson be. Hmm, steep price, huh? <laughs> Let's give it a quick save here. I think that's fine. And let's dig through this haystack. Graham watches with surprise as a contingent of ants marches into the haystack and begins to swarm through it. Here we are. We have some help. And a song! A song about me. Ha <laughs> ha! What will you find, boys? I'm glad to see there was a way that we could be of help to you. Ah, the old needle in the haystack. I'd like to present it to you. Perhaps you can find a use for it. Why, thank you, King Antony. I'm honored. Good luck in your travels, King Graham. And be careful. King Antony, you've saved the day. Take a look at our golden needle. This is a large golden needle. All right. All right, well, we've gotten to explore the town, meet its citizens. We've got to meet royalty, got to make friends with a dog and a bear. Things are looking up indeed. So let's go ahead and we'll save it here. Alliance with insects. They'll ha help us take down the evil wizard. I think I'll call it there for today. Thank you everybody for watching and I hope you're looking forward to more King's Quest V. I know I am, so I'll see you all in the next video.